Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the um, MVCDS Back to School Night for Middle School 2021-2022. My name is Eric Graham. I have been head of middle school since 2015-2016 uh, school year. Um, it is a wonderful place, the middle school, filled with wonderful students and excellent teachers. Uh, I am excited to tell you some more about our programming this evening. Um, and thank you for joining us virtually. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, I think this is gonna be a really good forum to uh, promote a lot of the curriculum and the um, special programming that we have. If you have further questions, of course, uh, please do reach out uh, to me. Um, so this evening, we will have kind of an introduction and overview of uh, the major curriculum. Um, I'm gonna talk about special programming here in a second. And then we will have uh, Rob Conover talk about physical education, uh, Brian Bozanich talk about the fine arts program that the middle schoolers um, uh, have, as well as the humanities department from um, our veteran teacher, Sarah Card. Um, and then STEM will be presented, STEM courses, both math and science will be presented by uh, Ms. Julie Schumann. And then, um, Ana Rodriguez will discuss uh, the World Language Program and their offerings. So, uh, without further ado, um, let's go ahead and get into some special programming in the middle school. I'm really excited to share this stuff with you guys because, um, you know, last year was an abnormal year. So even my eighth grade families aren't necessarily as familiar with a lot of these programs. Um, and then they should be brand new to the seventh grade. So let me talk through a couple of the key components that are really, um, really set the middle school um, apart. They um, are also programs that are developmentally appropriate for middle schoolers, and at the same time will be uh, preparing students for the upper school. I think um, it'll be clear, clear here in a second when I, when I, when I explain. <clears throat> so um, the first thing I'd like to explain is x -Block. In the middle school, we have a chunk of time once a week. On day fives, from 1.15 to about 2.40, we use that time to uh, do unique programming. So what we'll do in the fall, and we've, uh, our program has already begun, is we will go out into the community or on campus to do projects uh, as community service. We'll be divided up into advisories and we'll utilize school transportation. At times, we, meet, we may need um, assistance and parent transportation. Um, I kicked out a survey about a week ago regarding what XBlock was and um, how people felt about participation. If you've not filled that out, um, I really would encourage you to do so. Uh, that data is really important for us moving forward to know what to do with your child. So we will go out into the community and go to places like Habitat for Humanity, um, Metro Parks, uh, various community gardens, as well as working on campus. Uh, learning about the Maumee River and uh, the history of our environment on this land in particular, um, as well as working with the maintenance team and, you know, uh, doing some mulching projects and whatever it is, whatever other assistance that the maintenance team will need. So your advisor, uh, when you meet with them a little bit later in the evening, um, they will explain a little bit more about what that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. But it's a very unique program in regard that we are going out as a community, as a school, as a division, during our school day to do, to do community service. And we will do that um, eight times in this first semester. So in addition to that, we also have our middle school intensives. So essentially, um, middle school intensives happen after winter break. And then we abandon all of our academic classes. So we're not going to social studies, science, math, so on and so forth. What we are doing are these specialized courses that teachers have designed to be um, extremely experiential. Classes will be longer and students will have choice in terms of which ones that they will take. Some examples would be engineering, which is taught by students, students designing cardboard boats, which they then race or float um, at the YMCA. We call it a regatta. Um, different cooking opportunities, um, um, leadership academy, um, introduction to Lego robotics, coding, uh, things again that are kind of, um, that we do not typically offer, which, are, which do stress a, um, a high degree of experiential learning. And our teachers have more time to do this as they will be, you know, 
utilizing maybe field trips and going out into the community and um, going off campus, going outside. Um, so more information to come um, on middle school intensives and what our offerings will be uh, this year. Um, in addition to that, in addition to that, um, middle school students also in the spring have an opportunity to engage in independent study, which means essentially with a little guidance and help, they get to choose something that they are going to study for about eight weeks. Um, and then that'll culminate in a presentation, which they will give in a conference-like style um, in the middle school. We call that our learning symposium for our independent study. So independent studies have included a variety of things, including like learning how to juggle, pick locks, writing novels, art therapy, jazz band. That was awesome. We actually had a jazz band formed one year. Sports podcasting and or broadcasting. Photography has been um, very, uh, very popular over the years. And so students then will have an opportunity to get in and, you know, have a chunk of time, have a relationship with their advisor where they're bouncing things off of each other and kind of brainstorming and perhaps working in groups, they are taking on something that they would like to study. Um, and so that'll be, again, that'll be done in the fall. There'll be some more information kicked out about all of these events and they all have different times where we ask parents to um, interact with us so we can demonstrate the learning that has happened with your students. Um, but it's really exciting stuff and I really think, um, again, not only does it provide some unique opportunities uh, for students, but it also then prepares them for upper school versions of intensives, which they'll have three of in a year, um, independent study, which will be an option to them in their sophomore year. Um, and then the uh, placements that they have to go out and find their own community service programs to plug into, we've already provided them a network that they can tap, tap back into. So again, great experiences for kids and also prepares them for the future. All right, um, next, I'd like to talk a little bit about coming back to school. So um, students have done a great job in terms of COVID protocols. Um, they're wearing masks, they're staying distant. Um, they are, they're doing a great job. Teachers have jumped in and, and done a great job as well. I just wanted to kind of show you guys um, a couple of different photos in classrooms of how students are managing and what they look like. Again, notice the all masking. Uh, as well as the distance. And then I had to work in, uh, Lindsay Stevens has gotten a new lighting system in her room and um, it turns all sorts of colors and it really keeps the kids engaged. And I just thought that looked really cool. So um, in, in addition to that, um, you know, we learned a lot last year. We learned a lot about utilizing our campus, about getting outside, about designing different activities with similar learning outcomes that would take place outside. And that's what we've got a lot of. So we continue as the weather is nice. Uh, we continue to get outside. We have spread out into the middle ground. Um, as long as everyone is staying, you know, um, safe with their masks and their distance, we're doing a great job. Just some other kids kind of spread out and working as well. More outside act activities. So we're not as closed off as we were last year um, in terms of being able to get into the building. Uh, if you'd like to come in and visit, um, you know, for, to help out with an event or anything like that, uh, that's something that, you know, we can totally allow this year. Uh, but I just wanted to give you kind of a, a snapshot of what the kids day was like and, um, and, and what it looks like. So from here, uh, I'm going to kick it over to the department chairs as they're going to walk you through uh, the different academic disciplines that the students will be involved in. Um, and you will find out uh, quite a bit of information about the philosophy um, and the experience that your student will have. So uh, again, if you need to reach me, uh, I'm always a resource for you. I'm always available to you. Um, email is generally the best way to reach me at egram um, at mvcds.org. And uh, shoot me an email and I will quickly get back to you. Uh, have a wonderful evening and thank you again for uh, watching and then attending your virtual uh, meeting with your advisor later tonight. Uh, have a great evening and I hope to see you soon.
Hi, my name is Rob Conover. I'm the director of athletics and seventh and eighth grade PE teacher here at Maumee Valley Country Day. I'm beginning my eighth year at the school, um, and then I've got three children that are all in the lower school uh, currently. Uh, our middle school PE program will focus this year on developing lifelong fitness skills uh, and activities that our students can take with them beyond their time here at Maumee Valley. Uh, we've got plenty of athletic opportunities for uh, our middle school kids. So, and, and, and some that are currently happening uh, here this fall with middle school cross country, field hockey, and soccer. Uh, and it's not too late to get involved. So if you're interested or need more information, please reach out to me uh, as soon as you can. Uh, other than that, I look forward to having a great year. Thanks. Good evening, parents. My name is Brian Bozanich, and I'm chair of the Fine Arts Department, and here to talk a little bit about the middle school fine arts classes. Um, these are semester-long classes in visual art, music, and theater. And last year, we went to semester-long classes so we can go more into depth and content, which means that the eighth graders this year are going to their third different art. I'll talk a little bit about their choice for the second semester. Um, one of the highlights right here on the slide that you can see is we are returning to showcases and community share outs on December 16th and May 11th. These are evening showcases for the performing arts and to share our visual art work. Um, different this year for the first time, the eighth graders are going to be able to choose which art they continue to study for the second semester. We had a meeting last week. I'm currently working on those enrollments. We did this so that the students can start to explore more in depth one of the arts they might want to study as they move on to the upper school. Specifically in the visual art program at the seventh grade level, you can see what is covered here. I won't read point by point. Uh, Luann Glover is amazing at getting the students to start to bridge the gap towards an upper school and a more in-depth exploration. At the eighth grade level, Kristen Kowalski um, develops their own unique voice and what they want to share. You can see that there are a variety of logos and motifs that both of the visual arts classes work on to develop their technique and their personal vision for visual arts. In the music program, Mr. Brown teaches ukulele and how to read and play music notation. They work on rhythm, tempo, and melody. This gets more complex in the second semester. Um, they go more in depth in terms of the complexity of the material and how they perform it. In the theater classes, the first semester of theater classes for the seventh graders and the first semester eighth graders is all about the tools of an actor how an actor works uh, to create a role and connect to an audience. Uh, we do storytelling, we do scripted work, and typically that culminates in a performance for our community of a one-act play. The second semester is production where I focus more on design, uh, the design process, and how to come up with environments and characters through set and costume. Uh, the second semester is great for any students who wish to go into architecture or interior design or anything like that. It's a very active program. Also, the middle school can be involved in extracurricular arts in terms of art club, in terms of the vocal ensemble or strings ensemble. Many of them have already started working on that. If you need any more information about this, you can email me at bbozanich at mvcds.com or contact the individual teachers. Thank you. Good evening, um, special family members. Welcome to back to school night. I am Sarah Card, department chair for the Middle School Humanities. I'm here today to provide some insight on our philosophy and methods and skills and content stressed in our classes. Our mission is to excite passionate, resourceful, lifelong learners. We strive to create critical thinkers, readers, and writers in the middle school in the humanities. We are eager to open up your students' world, helping them to see their place 
in your communities, our communities here locally on a state, regional and national level, as well as globally. We will promote literacy skills, collaboration, comprehension, and communication. Inquiry is a big part of our program. We know that choice is a huge motivator for learners, and so we make sure to incorporate that in our programming. We want our middle school students to know that they are capable to make our world a better place. So let me introduce um, my team. Again, my name is Sarah Card. I've been teaching here at Mommy Valley since 99. I think that makes 22 years. This is, I think, my fifth year in the middle school and I love it here. I will be teaching all of our seventh graders English language arts and I will teach one eighth grade ELA class this year. Uh, Brett Green, Mr. Green, will be teaching all of the 8th grade um, social studies classes and one of the 7th grade social studies class. And Brett and I are super excited for you and your students to meet Johnny Garcia. He will be teaching with me two of the 8th grade ELA classes and with Brett two of the 7th grade ELA um, social studies classes. And we are super excited. He's um, a great addition to our team. In our English language arts classes, we take an integrated arts approach with intentionally teaching, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Students will read and write daily with intentional instruction, skill building, choice will be an important part of our program within our units of study. We will focus on writing many different genres this year while reading many different genres. There are, uh, uh, here are the different units of, here are the different units of study Johnny and I will be um, exposing and presenting to your students this year. We want to create lifelong learners, um, specifically readers and writers. In seventh grade, we are thinking about who we are and how our identity affects our reading and writing, starting with poetry. In eighth grade, we are building on this identity work that we started in seventh grade and we'll be writing memoirs, a personal essay. The content and skills built from seventh to build from seventh to eighth grade year, the level of mastery for these skills that your students develop during these two years will determine ninth grade ELA placement. Students after completing their seventh and eighth grade um, ELA classes will be placed in either English one or English two so that that instruction can be better tailored to their level as readers and writers. As we get closer to your student's eighth grade year and registering for ninth grade classes, we will be communicating which we think is a better fit for you and your student, English one or English two. If you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. In seventh, in seventh grade social studies, this is the first time your student has had a regular class that consistently meets for social studies. We are excited for this opportunity. Seventh grade uh, social studies is an exciting, um, eye-opening experience for your students. It's essentially contemporary world issues. We analyze culture, think about human rights, and how economics and government systems affect an individual's human rights. Uh, we will be following an inquiry-based program uh, where students are asking questions, researching, and presenting the, their findings. Um, Brett, Mr. Grain, will continue this philosophy in his eighth grade social studies classes following the um, United States history. He has students thinking about what it means to be an American. He has students looking at current events and thinking about the U.S. roles in those events and how our history has affected our nation's action and response to those events. Our mission is to create citizens that change where, where needed. To uh, We want them to 
be lifelong readers and writers and strive to provide opportunities to do this outside of class. Here are some of the uh, ways that we um, allow them to do that. If you have any um, questions about what we are doing in the um, middle school humanities department, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I am eager for this year to start. It was wonderful sharing all this information with you today. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about the middle school STEM team. Um, the mission of the STEM department is to create students who understand underlying math, science, and technology concepts, can apply problem solving skills to real, real world applications, and most importantly, they are confident, challenged, and excited students. Um, my name is Julie Schumann, and I am the middle school STEM chair. I teach all of the seventh grade math courses, and then I teach one eighth grade math course. Um, Mr. D is our eighth grade science teacher, and then he also teaches one course of eighth grade algebra. And then Miss Stevens is our seventh grade science teacher, and then she also teaches one course of eighth grade algebra. Uh, science at a glance. So for seventh graders, the fall semester focuses largely on life sciences, while the spring semester they explore earth and space science. Um, eighth graders will focus a lot on collecting data, analyzing that data, and then also with um, studying physical science throughout the entire school year. For our math progression, since all courses we're kind of teaching a little bit different content, um, we have this flow chart to show the progression of it. Um, seventh graders are either placed in an algebraic foundations course or in a seventh grade algebra course. That placement is determined typically by a test administered in the spring of their sixth grade year, or if they're a new student to us at Maumee Valley, they take a, their admissions test. So if they're in the seventh grade math foundations course, they would progress then to eighth grade algebra. And then as a freshman in the upper school, they would be taking the algebra course or they would be taking geometry. If they start out in seventh grade algebra, they would then progress to eighth grade geometry. And then as a freshman, either ninth grade geometry or ninth grade algebra two. Um, I like to always have a slide here to talk about calculators. They are not required, but um, we would love if every student had their own. Um, I personally recommend the TI-8485 graphing calculator as that's what the upper school requires once students reach Algebra 2. Um, I really feel strongly about students getting comfortable and familiar with their own calculators, not their cell phones. Um, most um, students will probably take the SAT or ACT at some point. You can't use a phone on that. Um, and those are time tests. So the quicker that a student can answer questions, the better off they typically will perform. Um, so if they have a calculator they're very comfortable with using, uh, that could help them perform better on that, on that test um, and just help them ultimately throughout their math career. And last but not least, uh, Math Counts is something that the STEM program does beyond the classroom. Um, math Counts is open to all sixth through eighth graders. Math Counts is a competition um, based club. The competitions start out just at the school level and then they branch out reg regionally at the state level and nationally. Um, over the last three years, we've taken a team to state and an individual to state. Um, I have a groups tab on my MB that all sixth through eighth graders are automatically enrolled in. So if you are interested in finding out more information, head to that groups tab on the my MV page. Your child can show you where that's at. Um, and I put up the meeting dates on there, the agendas, any information um, will always be posted on that site. We will be starting probably mid to end of September with our first meeting. And I will reach out by an email to everyone in the um, Math Counts group to let them know that it's coming up. Um, but please feel free to reach out with me with any questions. You can email me. Um, I am happy to answer any and all questions. Thank you all. I hope you have a great night. Hi, everyone. My name is Anna Rodriguez, and I am one of the Spanish teachers here in the middle school. 
Um, I'm going to be going over um, our mission statement, our belief statements, our goals for the World Language Department, um, as well as the topics we cover, some of the resources that we use, and um, the progression uh, from lower school to middle school and then to the upper school. Um, I'm going to start off with our uh, mission statement. So the mission of the World Languages Department is to educate students to become proficient in communication um, and informed global citizens by promoting linguistic competence and providing critical insight into world cultures. Um, our belief statement uh, is as follows. The World Languages Department at Maumee Valley believes that a rigorous and well-articulated well sorry, um, K-12 program will support the proficiency of multiple languages, um, focus on real-life real applications of authentic language as an effective way of promoting proficiency in the language, um, promote the use of proficiency-based assessments in the three modes of communication, so the interpretive mode, the interpersonal mode, and the presentational mode, as well as incorporate the study of different cultures um, to f further understand multiple ways of viewing the world. Um, we will also help to develop critical thinking skills and reinforce student knowledge of other disciplines and provide individual support to students as language acquisition is a process, um, which means that students acquire proficiency at different rates. Um, so some of our goals are communicate in languages other than English, um, gain knowledge and understanding of other cultures, develop insight into the nature of language and culture, connect with other disciplines, and participate in mult multilingual communities at home as well as around the world. Um, so this is me, Anna Rodriguez, um, and I teach uh, Spanish 2. So 7th graders would go to Spanish 2A, and then 8th um, graders would be in Spanish 2B if they are going through um, the progression with me. And um, Senora Like is, Sarah Like is the other Spanish teacher here in the middle school, and she teaches 7th grade Spanish 1A and 8th grade Spanish 1B. So the students would go with her if they are going through the progression um, with her, okay? Um, Spanish one at a glance. So some of the resources that Senora like uses in her classes are things like Senor Woolley, um, so they watch videos, do different activities, um, readers from Fluency Matters for some free choice reading as well as some full, like whole class um, readings, um, stories based on Blaine Ray's Look I Can Talk series, um, the textbook, with, and the textbook we use is Así Se Dice, and our imaginations and real life situations to drive conversations um, using different practice structures as well as um, vocab. Um, Spanish too at a glance. Um, so within um, Spanish with me and Spanish too, students are going to go over topics such as en avión, una rutina diferente, um, en tren, so traveling by train, um, en el restaurante, uh, que se celebra, and then que se celebra normally is something that happens at the end of Spanish 2A um, or at the beginning of Spanish 2B, depending on how everything falls. Um, so in Spanish 2B, we'll cover que se celebra if we didn't get to it during Spanish 2A. Um, and then we will move into Tecnomundo, en el hotel Ciudad y Campo y Cocina Hispana. So those are just the themes um, that they will see through Spanish 2. Um, some of the resources that I use in my classroom, um, as he said, these are textbooks, so the same as Senora Like would use, um, Fluency Matters Readers, um, Flangu, which is an online, um, it's, it's a website that students can log in and see a ton of different books, some of the same ones from Fluency Matters and then some additional ones. Um, so it's sort of like Netflix, but for books, um, so they can choose different books to read. Um, that are geared towards language learners. Um, I also try to use Newzella, um, which the humanities department also uses. Um, articles and infographics that I find um, on the web that are related to some of the themes or units that we're studying. Um, Senior Woolley, Kahoot, quizzes, things like that. All right, so as far as the world language placement and progression, um, so the goal for high school is that students are able to take the AP test um, or that students are getting the seal of biliteracy, which is determined by the Apple test. Um, so the typical sequence for Mommy Valley, um, if students have been um, progressing through the grades starting in the lower school or even in the ELC, um, is that students will in fifth and sixth grade start taking Spanish um, 1A and 1B with Senora-like. 
Um, and then in seventh grade, they would go to me for Spanish uh, 2A and 2B. Um, ninth grade, the goal is for them to start in the upper school in Spanish 3. And then 10th grade, um, Spanish 4. And then 11th and 12th grade, um, AP, you know, electives, independent studies, things like that, that are related to Spanish um, or whatever language they're studying. So that being said, if students start off in Mommy Valley um, at a different place, right? So if they start, um, let's say they, they come to Mo Mommy Valley new um, in fifth and sixth grade or in seventh grade, um, then when they come into the middle school, they would actually start um, in Spanish 1A or 1B. So if a student maybe doesn't, um, like I mentioned earlier, students progress at a different rate. So if their their foundation isn't strong enough um, quite yet, or if they've started um, Spanish a little later than some of their um, peers, then when they come to the middle school in seventh grade, they would start with Senor Like in Spanish 1 and do Spanish 1A and then Spanish 1B. Then when they come to seventh grade with myself, uh, if they come into the middle school um, and, and they're coming to my class, then they would go to Spanish 2A or 2B. So Spanish 2A would happen seventh grade year and Spanish 2B would happen eighth grade year. And that's where they, the progression would continue. Um, if they do go to Spanish 1A and 1B in the middle school, then when they get to the upper school, the goal is that they would um, then start in ninth grade with Spanish 2. Um, but it's a little different in the upper school because they don't have 2A and 2B. It's just one year of Spanish 2 and then they'd move on to Spanish 3 and so forth. All right, um, so at the end of Spanish 2, students do take the Apple test. Um, so the goal is for them to place an intermediate mid in order to move on to Spanish 3. So that is one of the things that help us determine um, what level of Spanish they're ready for in the upper school. Um, we want them to be set up for success in ninth grade. Um, so if a student is not ready, um, for Spanish 3, then we encourage them to take Spanish 2 in the upper school. Um, if a student has a strong foundation, is doing well on assessments, um, places in that goal area of intermediate mid on the Apple test, um, then we will move them into Spanish 3 in the upper school. But because of the fact that grades are important and matter in the upper school especially, then we want to make sure they're placed in a Spanish class where they're going to be successful. Um, obviously, you know, with a little push from us and, and all of that. All right, so now we're going to move on to middle school fine arts. Um, it was nice speaking to all of you. I hope you all have a great day. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email um, myself or Senor Like at any time. Thank you. Have a good day. So that is our program for this evening. Thank you so much for joining us and learning more about the curriculum that your child will go through. Uh, we are very proud of our program, and we think it does an amazing job of preparing students uh, to go to the upper school. And um, the thing I would like to leave you with tonight is our communication plan. So moving forward, you will receive a push page or an email from me every Thursday afternoon. In addition to that, it will be linked to the resource board um, under middle school for my MV. Uh, this evening, when you are meeting with your advisors, uh, they should show you how to utilize the resource board, which will be kind of the hub or the base for all communication or all information uh, for middle school. So um, be expecting those emails and then you can reference them back on the resource board. Thank you so much for watching our video this evening. Have a wonderful night and um, we're going to have a tremendous school year. So looking forward to it. Please reach out if you need uh, any additional information or have any questions. Thank you so much. Good night.